Welcome to Excel Business Statistical Analysis video 19. And in this video, we're going to talk about conditional probability. Now, this is just a quick video about conditional probability to introduce the concept, which we'll use much more extensively when we get to the multiplication law of probability. And page 16 in our PDF notes has the notes and the three examples we're going to do. But if we jump over to our Excel file, we'll check out these notes here and do the examples on the sheet V19. Now, to understand conditional probability, let's first look at an example that's not conditional probability. This is not conditional probability. If we ask, what is the probability of pulling a queen card from a randomly shuffled deck of 52 cards? Well, there are four matching sample points, one, two, three, four. When you calculate the probability, the full sample space is intact. That means sample space equals 52 cards. And that's the key to a probability being not conditional. The sample space hasn't changed. So the probability of pulling one queen from a deck of cards, probability of queen one, equals 4 divided by 52. This is conditional probability. Given that you pulled a spade queen card as your first card, what is the probability you can pull a queen card in the second try? Now here, there are three matching sample points, one, two, three. When you calculate the probability, the sample space has changed. The sample space equals 51 cards. And that's the key to conditional probability. It's conditioned on the fact that something already happened. We already pulled one card. So the probability of pulling a second queen, given that you already pulled a queen, Probability queen 2, given that queen 1 has already been selected, well, it's equal to 3 divided by 51. And these events, pulling a second queen and pulling a first queen, those are called dependent events. Now we can define conditional probability as the probability of an event given that another related event has already occurred. And importantly, after the first event has occurred, the sample space has changed. Now the notation we're going to use is probability of event A given that event B has already occurred. That vertical bar means given that. Now let's scroll down and look at some examples. Here we have a cross-tabulated report. And this is from a survey about American social media use. And we're just looking at YouTube and Facebook. So out of a survey of 200, there are 138 that use Facebook and 162 that used YouTube. And because this is a cross tab, the intersection, that's the and logical test. 116 out of 200 used YouTube and Facebook. Now let's calculate the probability that someone used YouTube. Equal sign, and we get the total who used YouTube, and we divide it by 200. That's all the items from the sample space. And when we hit Enter, we get 0.81. For this example, the sample space has not changed. This is not a conditional probability. Now what about the probability that they use Facebook and YouTube? Well, we can get that from our cross tab. There's the intersection, 116 compared to 200. When I hit Enter, I get 58% use both. Neither one of those are conditional probabilities. In both cases, the sample space did not change. We're still looking at a denominator of 200. But if we ask the question, what's the probability that somebody used Facebook given that they use YouTube, that's a conditional probability. Notice the second item, use YouTube. That's going to define the number in the sample space. So there it is. The sample space has changed from 200 to 162. Now the question says use Facebook. Well, there's use Facebook. And guess what? There's 22 that used it that didn't use YouTube. But that's the number that used YouTube. So if we compare these two, we get our conditional probability. 
So down here equals 116 divided by not 200, 162, and enter. So about 71% use Facebook, given that they use YouTube. Now this question, what's the probability they use YouTube, given that they use Facebook? Well, it's not the 200. It's going to be the 138 in the denominator. Equal sign, and we want the frequency for use YouTube and use Facebook, 116. And then we divide it by the total who use Facebook. That changes the sample space. And when I hit Enter, I get 84%. Now, I refer to this as uses Facebook given that they use YouTube. But you might also hear, if a person uses YouTube, what is the probability they use Facebook? In both cases, that's conditional probability. Now, I want to notice a pattern about calculating these conditional probabilities. That 116 in the numerator, that frequency comes from running an AND logical test, YouTube and Facebook. Now notice for the denominators, that's a single condition logical test. That's the count for the event use YouTube. That's the single condition logical test, the count for use Facebook. So whenever you're given a conditional probability, you take the AND logical test of both events and then the single logical test total for the event listed second. Now, the reason we're thinking of it in those terms is because we're going to look at the conditional probability rule. But before we do that, I want you to remember back to our cross-tabulated pivot table video. We created this with pivot tables. And actually, next video, we'll create this with a pivot table. But we also learned how to take every single number in a cross-tabulated report and compare it to the grand total. That was using the percent of grand total calculation. Now, if we scroll down here, I've already done that here. I took every number, compared it to 200. Now, in probability, this is called a joint probability table. You could just as easily call it an AND logical test probability table. Everything on the inside runs an AND logical test. And everything on the outside is a single condition, single event probability, also called the marginal percentage. Now over here, we have the exact same conditional probabilities that we want to calculate. It says use Facebook given that we use YouTube. Well, from a joint probability table, we simply take the AND probability, that's for YouTube and Facebook, and divide it by, remember, YouTube is listed second after the given that vertical bar. But that's the given that event. So we take the probability for that. And that'll give us the exact same conditional probability. If we do the same here, we see use YouTube given that we use Facebook. So I'm going to get the AND. That's this 0.58. The probability for the single event, use Facebook. And when I hit Enter, I get the same probability. Now here's the conditional probability rule. It says probability of A, given that B has already occurred, well, you go ahead and run the AND to calculate the probability. And then you divide it by the given that event probability. Notice here we say B, given that A has already occurred. So immediately in the denominator, you list the single condition event, the given that event probability. And then you just put the AND in the numerator. And that's what we did for both of these calculations. That 0.58, that's the AND. That 0.81, that's the marginal probability, the single event logical test, the probability for the given that event, use YouTube. Now, we'll use the conditional probability rule a bunch in videos 21 and 22. But I want to scroll down here and just create two other examples on the fly. Now, I went ahead and typed this out. Now, let's just say that someone gave you these probabilities. And actually, in the textbook, they do this a lot. They just give you flat out, not from a data set, two probabilities. Well, from this, we can say, hey, we want to calculate probability of event A given that B has already occurred. So our formula would be equals 
A and B divided by the single event, the given that event probability. And when I hit Enter, that's the probability that you use Facebook given that you don't use YouTube. And we could write that out. So there it is. Now I want to look at one other example. And I want to go over to the sheet V20. This is actually a next video. I'm going to steal the data set from next video. Click in a single cell. And I want to highlight everything. So I'm going to use Control Asterisk. I use the number pad asterisk. If you're using the normal keypad, you have to use Control Shift 8. But once you highlight it, Control C to copy, then come back over to V19. And I'm going to click in, say, F59, Control V. Now let's copy these and paste them down here. Actually, watch this. I'm going to move this, Control Asterisk, Control X. Arrow, 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 Control V. All I did was move it. I'll add some borders. And I'll add some green fill. Right click, Mini Toolbar. We're going to use formulas and calculate this conditional probability from this data set. Well, we need our conditions. So not use YouTube. And you better spell all of this correct and don't have any extra spaces. And then use Facebook. And those are the two conditions we're going to need. I'll type events, type probability at the top. And we're also going to need total records. Watch this. I'm just going to copy this. I'm just copying the formatting. Here I'm going to use rows and highlight the top two cells, Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace to jump back to the active cell, and Enter. Now let's calculate the single condition given that probability. So we use count ifs. And all I'm going to look at is the YouTube column. So I click on the top cell, Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace, comma, and then I'm going to right arrow, because I know the conditions there, even though the formula is hanging out. And when I hit Enter, I don't get a probability, but I do get the count of the new sample space. That's the number of people that don't use YouTube. To get the probability that someone didn't use YouTube, we divide it by the 200. Now here we want to use count ifs to calculate an AND logical test and count. I'll do use Facebook first, Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace, comma, and I'm going to write arrow, because that's where the use Facebook criteria is, comma. And then for criteria range 2, now we're going to use the YouTube column comma, up arrow, right arrow to get to the second condition. That's going to calculate the count for this AND logical test. So there it is, 22. And we want to divide it by the 200. So for our conditional probability, we're going to take the probability of both, that's the AND, and divide by the probability of the given that event. So there we go. When I hit Enter, I get exactly the same thing. But really, if we have the data set, unless we need these probabilities for something else, we can actually calculate this probability, a conditional probability, directly. So I'm going to copy this, Control V, delete the formula, equals count ifs. And in the numerator is the AND logical test, use Facebook. I'm going to not use YouTube. That's the AND, and that gives us the 22. But we divide by that 38, which is the count for not use YouTube. And momentarily, I could highlight this and F9 and see, sure enough, that's 38. But that's the sample space. The sample space has changed from that original 200. Control Z and Enter. All right, in this video, we talked about conditional probability. We saw how to do some calculations based on a data set. We saw how if they just give us straight probabilities, as long as they give us the given that probability and the AND logical test of the two events probabilities, we can just 
make our calculation based on those. We saw how to make calculations from a joint probability table, from a cross tabulated table. And we started it off by talking about the basics of conditional probability. All right, next video, we'll talk about joint probability tables. All right, we'll see you next video.